Hey, the latest trend in the restaurant world, ghost and virtual kitchens. Kate Rogers is here at Post 9. She's going to explain what they are, why companies like Alphabet, Uber, and more are getting into the space. Americans spent $10 billion on food delivery services last year. And restaurants large and small are looking to cash in by using extra kitchen capacity to service delivery. These virtual kitchens are run out of existing restaurant kitchens. There are also ghost kitchens, which are standalone centers. Both serve the growing online delivery category. Los Angeles-based Fat Burger franchise locations have become virtual kitchens for Florida-based Hurricane Grill and Wings, introducing a new concept to the L.A. community sold strictly on third-party delivery apps. Franchisees are seeing a boost in sales. A virtual restaurant enables the franchisee to sell more product under a different brand and have incremental profit and make more money. So they're making an extra two to $5,000 a week in incremental sales. Data from Morningstar finds ghost and virtual kitchens can utilize anywhere between 10 and 50% of the square footage, require 15 to 50% of labor depending on program structuring, and generate 75% to 100% of the transactions of a traditional restaurant operating in the same category. Uber Eats has 4,000 virtual restaurants globally, which it says are boosting companies' sales. Uber Eats handles the tech components on its app. The virtual restaurant brings 35% incremental sales relative to what the parent brick-and-mortar business does on Uber Eats. Now, these concepts are known by many different names, kitchen centers, cloud kitchens, dark kitchens, and more. They may vary in their form, but all focus on one thing, and that is growing delivery business. In fact, Wendy said at its investor day last week that it'll have two dark kitchens open before the end of the year to help it grow in areas that offer big delivery opportunities or in areas that may not have worked previously due to real estate constraints, which is interesting because Wendy's is kind of the first big fast food player now we've heard saying it's going to push into this space. This is absolutely interesting. I'm wondering what happens if and when we see an economic downturn. Does this become even more lucrative or is this something that goes away? So a lot of people think that obviously fast food will be one of the last places we'll see consumers cut back because it is so cheap. But delivery of fast food can be expensive because there are all of these added fees. So analysts say while these concepts may be really smart right now, if we do hit a recession, that's one area that consumers could pull back because you do have to pay an extra four, six dollars or whatever it may be to get that food delivered. You mentioned the real estate, which is a very big deal, mm -hmm. but also like kitchen complexity mm -hmm. is what a lot of these, especially quick service, does it mean they can't do new items or complex items very easily? Well, so a lot of them and what Uber's doing with Uber Eats in particular is identifying foods that certain areas are lacking and then the kitchen concept will make a different food that's specifically for delivery. So you have to imagine that a lot of operators are going to choose something that, like a wing, for example, right. that could be done very quickly and easily. to get And that'll to travel the... well, yes, right? Yes, exactly. It's a... Not everything travels well. <laughs> exactly. This is the triumph of Domino's Pizza, in effect. I mean, Right? Whoever ate at a Domino's. It was a ghost kitchen all along, delivering you your food. And, Certainly. Right? Yeah. yeah, I mean, Domino's obviously push very heavily into that tech space. They do everything in-house, and they handle all of that delivery. It's what Rich Allison's been talking about over and over. They don't use any of these third-party delivery companies. They're doing everything in-house. Guggenheim actually chose them as a best idea in the restaurant category today. Even though, uh, you know, they're getting a lot of pushback from these aggregators, they think that the Domino's model actually not teaming up with them will be best for that company long-term, which is interesting. And, of course, you're talking about Uber, Uber's founder, Travis Kalanick, this is one of the areas he's been investing in, right? That is. It kind of pits him directly against Uber Eats, but he has, I believe, a controlling stake in a company that runs cloud kitchens, which are these shared kitchens that a lot of companies are using to push into the ghost and virtual kitchens. That's a great story.